House of the Dragon, the season finale, the Black Queen was fantastic. This is by far one of the best episodes of House of the Dragon. This is a great season finale. I love this episode. And here's the thing, everybody. My name's Shalise. First of all, there will be spoilers, so you don't want to spoil. Obviously, get out. So, let me just say this. Um, Renera gets the news that her father died. And she learns the news that Alicent, in a sense, has betrayed her. And now Aegon sits on the Iron Throne. And because of that, since Rhaenys told them, both told uh, Damon and uh, and Rhaenyra about what Alicent has done, and what Aegon has done, what the High Towers has done, Rhaenyra, while she, she's pregnant at the time, she loses the child. She loses the cow as a miscarriage. It could be a complication of losing her father, uh, learning her best, sword drawn, her best friend betrayed her. It's just a lot of hurt and a lot of emotions, and any one of those factors could be it, why she lost a miscarriage. Either way, she lost a baby because of the situation. And everybody's doing their own thing because of the situation. Uh, Damon and Rhaenyra are butting heads of what or not to do. Like in a previous episode with Allison was trying to not with a future bloodshed. Rhaenyra does not want future bloodshed. She's actually contemplating taking the offer that Allison was making. Damon is like Otto. Like, no way, no how. We're not going to give in to these motherfuckers. We'll kill them all beforehand. When people say, like, Damon is, like, is so different from, I don't know, Damon's a, a bad guy that you love to hate. I mean, that you love to root for. Well, I was just the guy you love to hate. Thing is, though, Damon is ferocious just as Otto Hightower. They want war. They want to fight. And there's no, as Damon says, he does not want his children to be cupbearers to the drunk Aegon. He does not want that. He does not want any part of that. He wants the drone he wants the ambition. He wants it for his wife. He wants it for his uh, future kids. I mean, for his kids. He wants it all. And Rhaenyra, in a sense, she wants to do this. Her kind of, What I love about in this TV show compared to the books, they just have Rhaenyra just wants the Iron Throne because she's entitled to it. In this show, they try to make it really seem like she has something about the Song of Ice and Fire. She has a greater duty to the realm. and makes her a much more likable character, in my opinion. The thing is, though, speaking of likable and unlikable, Damon, for some odd reason, chokes her because he's very frustrated with the fact that she's he's uh, that she is so much like his uh, like his brother, her father, which is the most obvious. I never thought I had that sentence ever, but the fact is, Damon chokes Rhaenyra for a bit. I get that he's grieving loss of his uh, child, grieving loss of his brother, who he loved dearly and who he believed was murdered. I. I don't, this is something with the writers where I don't necessarily, Damon is more than capable of murdering anybody he wants. If you tell me Damon is a child killer, a woman killer and all that stuff, he's all that. The only thing I don't see him as is a rapist. Him choking Rhaenyra, did not see coming. Did not see even for a couple seconds. Did he look disgusted at himself? Did Rhaenyra look disgusted by him? Yes, and she looked fearful of him. And she also realized that Damon was never told to die some fire from his brother. So... There's drama right there. Uh, like the previous episode, I did not like when Renice came from the dra uh, ground from her dragon after she killed so many people just to not destroy the high towers. I found that part stupidly written as I found Damon choking Rhaenyra a bit stupid as hell too. But I, I, I guess this is something where the writers don't want to show Damon as kind of has some good feelings. I mean, the guy's capable of ultimate murder. This is coming for a guy who killed his wife on freaking horseback. But the thing is, though, I didn't expect him to choke his niece wife after a loss of pregnancy after a loss of so much stuff but Rhaenyra is trying so hard not to get into vengeance she's not declaring war just yet she's wanting to see where other houses stand and then she'll see she will not make the first move if war will happen she will not make the first move sad to say war is gonna happen <laughs> and the thing is so the sea snake or chorus valarian is back he's uh, he's done the fever is broke he's back and he's declaring Driftmark with Renice to uh, stand with Queen Rhaenyra. The thing is, though, him and Renice, they had an honest conversation. And this is something I always hated about the Cloris Ryan. I mean, he admits that his ambition is what drove so much. Uh, like, so much ambition has been following his family. And he wants to get out at the end of the day. But he has to stand with Rhaenyra because his wife's saying, like, those children will be hurt. So... If her grandchildren will be hurt and she does not want that she wants safety for that family and 
So even though I appreciate that they reconciled, the fact is I still think it was a piece of shit move to leave your wife after uh, six months, and he admits it's a piece of shit move. And he and he and she reminds him that we both lost our children, and not just you. You abandoned me for six years to go do your own things, but something good came out of it. Now, because of what the because of what the sneak snake has done, he's now in control of to block all trade from the sea to King's Landing. He could block many things, and he could starve out the people of King's Landing or the Greens. So that's a good thing. So Rhaenyra has some stability. She sends her sons, Luke and Jake's. They go to different sections. She sends her youngest Luke to uh, uh, to the Baratheon household, and the thing is, though, with the Baratheons, she expects them to honor the code. Even though, the, uh, even though the guy who sits at the Brothian household, his father made that culture in there. He's long since dead. And the thing is, though, when the young son goes his own way, and he when he's trying that, uh, when Luke is just basically gonna have a conversation with Boris Baratheon, I believe his name is Boris Baratheon. The fact is, things are going according to plan for him at all. The fact is, he sees Aemon Targaryen. He sees, uh, he sees the big dragon Vagar. He sees the big dragon on one side of Storm, uh, uh, Storm ends, and, or so, I'm forgetting the name, the Stormfront, whatever it was, where the Brotten household is. He sees uh, that uh, Aegon's, uh, Aemon's dragon is there. And the thing is, though, Luke still has to offer the terms to his uh, mother, to the freaking uh, Lord of uh, Lord Brotten. And the thing is, though, Brotten, he doesn't like to read or he can't read. And he just says, Maester, read this for me. And he doesn't like the fact that Luke came here with empty hands and declaring, uh, you, uh, like, what is your offer? Are you, will you marry one of my daughters? No. Aemon has declared to marry one of the daughters. He, and then during so, offer arms and security. So then right there, Queen Allison and Aemon, they already have a strong, a stronghold with the Baratheon line. So the Baratheons are going to go for Team Green instead of Team Red Black with Rhaenyra. And the Baratheon said this, go tell your mother that I the Lord of Storms end. That's what it is. The place the Lord of Storms is does not, is not some like dog that she could just call and went to uh, take on her enemies. So safe to say he was insulted that Rhaenyra didn't offer anything to this man and just expected to be expected uh, just to get into the fold with Rhaenyra. And the thing is, oh, uh, everything was going all smoothly. Luke was on his way, and then Aemon's like, you know what? Uh, a strong bastard, strong, sir, strong. I want your eye. The same eye that you took from me, I want your eye. And Luke says, I swore on the says seven, I swore uh, from my mother, I would not fight you. And Aemon's like, a fight wouldn't be really a challenge anyway. I just want your eye. And Aemon removes his eye. He has a like blue sapphire in his eye. And he's like, he takes out a knife, throws it on the floor. He's like, just one. I will give, keep as a gift to my mother. I will not blind you. So generous is Aemon. And Luke says no. Aemon chases him. Baratheon stops it. He doesn't want no bloodshed in here. He came in as an envoy. He's leaving as an envoy. They don't add the part where in the book where the Baratheon's like, or Aemon gets so pissed off because one of the Baratheon's daughters was like in the books, like uh, it looks like he took more than your eye. It looks like he took your cock too, and uh, like your manhood. And Aemon gets so furious. He asks Baratheon in the books, uh, like, uh, like, can I go after him? Like, what you do in your, uh, what you do out there is none of my business. What you do here is mine, basically. So Aemon takes after uh, Luke. And the thing is, though, in the books and the TV show, you gotta understand this. It's completely different, so it's not gonna be totally. 100% accurate. Aemon straight up murders Luke in the freaking books. He chases him during the storm with his dragon. He kills Luke and Luke falls to his death with his dragon. In the show, it's a bit different. He chases Luke and you have to really see the director's part. You have to really see the behind the scenes footage of what the characters are portraying. Aemon, as the actor who portrays him, says that, or the one director says that, he wasn't trying to kill necessarily Luke. He wanted his vengeance for his eye. He wanted to scare him, to bully him. He wanted to just pressure him. The thing is, though, you can't really control dragons. And this is what I love about the show. They make the point that dragons are not pets. That they just fall orders like simple horses and all that stuff. Oh, no. Dragons had to mind their own. And the thing is, though, Luke somehow escapes. He evades it, and he's looks like he's gone, and he's free in the clear. The thing is, though... 
he his dragon when uh, when Aemon's just laughing in the wind with his dragon, Luke's dragon turns to Vagar and blows fire at him. And you could just say here Luke, and if you have subtitles, screaming no no no, like, and then Aemon's trying to control Vagar's like no Vagar, listen to me, I control you. And it looks like a clear blue skies. Luke's out of the way, and then Vagar kills Luke with the dragon. Rhaenyra loses a son. The war is on. And the look of shock on Aemon's face because he was saying, no, 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 Vagar, no. I don't believe Aemon wanted to kill Luke in that instance. He knew now there is no turning back. So it's going to be quite interesting when if he re when he returns to King Landing, what he's going to say to his mother. He's like, I've declared war. No one's going to screw with the guy with the biggest dragon. No one's going to screw with this guy who just declared war. And Rhaenyra, her piece is gone. They want blood. She wants blood. And if we all know the books, if y'all read it, if you ever looked up Blood and Cheese, it's one of the most messed up things in all the Game of Thrones history, all of House of Dragon. I say that's worse than the Red Wedding. It's just as bad. If they play it by how the books go, oh, it's going to get so much worse. And how the show is going to go, I'm not sure if they're going to go full-blown evil, like a uh, full-blown death. Like, I will murder everyone you love, Rhaenyra, to... Maybe Damon might do something which Rhaenyra might not like. And that's going to separate and cause a rift between them. Because there's already a rift between with Damon just putting his hands on her. So I'm just very excited for the next season, which we might get to get till like 23, 24. Who freaking knows? But overall, I love this entire dang show. This has renewed my faith in Game of Thrones like many fans. I absolutely love this freaking episode. I would say this is my third. It's not better than episode five. I thought that episodes was very much more developed nicely of the rift between Alice and Rhaenyra and I not better than episode 8 but this was a fantastic episode and I gotta see where it's gonna rank in future videos I will be doing a season 1 review I will be ranking the episodes I'll be doing top 10 characters I'll be looking at the sync counter for green and black I'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff of House of Dragon but what's your personal opinion everybody did you all enjoy this episode of House of Dragon did you love this episode did you hate this episode do you believe Damon actually would have done that to freaking Rhaenyra? Not to me, but overall, this was a very great episode of House of Dragon. Episode 10, The Black Queen, was your personal opinion, everybody. My name's Elise, and I'll offer it to everybody. Bye-bye.